Glory to God. Now we in uh, Matthew chapter, Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28, verse 16. Look at this. This is very powerful. It said, then the 11 disciples went away into Galilee. Galilee into the mountain where Jesus had appointed them. It says, then the 11 disciples, they went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. Now, saints, I want you to see this. It says that there was a mountain that Jesus appointed to them. Let's read this again. I'm in uh, Matthew chapter 28, verse 16. Then the 11 disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain. Now, it didn't say upon a mountain. It said into a mountain. I want you to notice this. Instead of it saying upon a mountain, it said they went into so saints, what you can catch is that this is a dimension. It's not just a natural mountain. It's actually a dimension in the spirit. They went into it. They went into this dimension. But this dimension is not a small one. It's high. It says they went into a mountain. So they went into a high place where Jesus had appointed them. I want you to notice how Jesus, Dr. Jesus, has appointed them a high place in the earth realm. Dr. Jesus has appointed them to be in a high place. Is showing right here that the Father has ordained them to have a reigning, a dominion, being the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. You notice that this was not appointed to them to be in a valley. That's the dimension of a low place. But they're they're given the dimension of a mountain. Everybody in the body of Christ has a high place, a mountain that you was appointed by God to live on and to function out of this mountain for the rest of your life. Everybody has it. Everybody has it. Not everybody going to use it, but everybody has a high place a mountain that you was appointed to. You know what appointed to mean? That this is on the Father's schedule. This is what he decided. This is a part of his good plan for you. This is how he want to bring you happiness. If you notice that after he rises from the dead, he dispatches them to the mountain because Jesus already paid for all the valleys to be removed. I receive my financial mountain right now in Jesus' name. I receive my financial mountain in the name of Jesus. Everybody got a mountain and on that mountain is a high place. It means that you are an overseer. You are a ruler over much. You are a dominator. You are a captain, a commander, a chief. What if you were a president over prosperity? And you have the authority over the government of God. Did you know that the father told me that a sower is a governmental position? A sower is a, is a governmental office. You are a governmental official when you're sowing. That's why you have authority to call those things that be not as though they were. That's why you can pull money come if you can decree finances you could lose your wealth because you are a governmental official. 
A sower is... Sowing is a gift of the Holy Spirit. Is an anointing of the Holy Spirit. Is a grace. The harvest is a is a dimension of God that Satan is, he dreads that anyone ever steps into, because harvest is is the eradication of Satan to rule you. A harvest means that Satan no longer has the power to stop you. A harvest delivers you from delays. A harvest is the father planting the lifestyle. Planting the lifestyle that you were supposed to live on you right now. What's so powerful about a harvest is that once you receive a harvest, there's no door for demons to subject you to oppression. You know, oppression often happens because of lack of finances. Beat you into a situation because of lack of finances. Mm, mm, mm. Verse 17 says, and when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. Now, I want you to I want you to emphasize those, those that worshiped him. Don't look at those that doubted. Look at those that worshipped him. It says there were some that worshipped him. Now, his was powerful. The reason why 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 they they are even empowered to worship him because they're functioning out of their mountain place. Mentally, they are saturated with the government of God. They're saturated with the kingdom mindset. So, so they are already trained to worship. And, and watch this. They are the first ones that can recognize them. Because see, so is our seers. How come they not doubting like the other people? Cause they're in the posture of worship already. So, so their eyes are already in the, their, their eyes are already functioning. They already in the flow. So it's easy for them to detect them. They, the other people can't detect them cause they, the other people not in an intimate place. Now look at verse 18 and Jesus came and spake unto them saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Now, I want you to look at this again. All power is given unto me. All power, even the power to get wealth. Financial power. Wealth power, riches power. Debt cancellation power. Abundance power. Prosperity power. My cup runneth over power. He says all power is given unto me. So, so I want you to see this. Dr. Jesus is really your financier. Dr. Jesus is really your financial support. Dr. Jesus is really the one that has the authority to orchestrate. Now, saints, I want you to see this. He said, all power is given unto me. Now, you notice in this direction, he didn't say authority. He said power in this, in this text. Because power is his ability. But see, when I start working the kingdom, I give him the authority to do what his power is. Does. When I start praising him, I let him 
I release his ability, but I give the authority for him to remove heaviness. When I sow, I release his power and give him the authority to lose wealth or, or to uh, um, orchestrate events where wealth flows. Because you are the wealth looser. Let me get that straight. King Jesus don't lose wealth. You are the wealth looser. I want to get that corrected so you understand. Because that's why a lot of people have struggled financially because they was waiting for the father to release wealth. And the father is not the release of wealth. You are the release of wealth. Jesus has all the power. But, but he wants you to flow with him. So that you can move in his authority. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Now look at this. Look what he's telling them. I'm going to have you master the teacher's office. So it is divine when the father sent a teacher to you. That means that you're going to step into your appointed man, mountain. And you're going to be able to worship him. Even though some going to doubt him. It says, teach all nations, baptizing them in water. No. It didn't say baptizing them in water. It said baptizing them in the name of the Father. Now, listen, before people go into theological debate, what they're missing, the beauty of this text, the power of the text is, is that it's saying baptize the people in the name. So that means that all of the names of God is going to cover the people after they are taught. El Shaddai is going to cover you after you taught about the seed. El Shaddai is not covering everybody. Jesus may have covered you, meaning he shall deliver his people from their sin. Okay, after you get delivered from your sin, now you got an inheritance to manifest. So we see in one aspect, there is a, a name that can rest on you that is for being born again. But then you need the name to rest on you for wealth. You, you, you need Jehovah Rapha to rest on you for health. And so then the father will even teach you how to eat correctly. You, you know, sometimes belly fat and, 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 you know, no, you know, sometimes you're eating. Sometimes it, it contributes to your high blood pressure. Now, listen. I'm talking to you as you get older in years, you know what I'm saying? When you feel like, why well, I can't break this? Because sometimes your weight, it'll connect to the, the high blood pressure so that you know all of the roots that's operating while the blood pressure stays. And it's connected to eating and it's connected to stress as well. Overthinkers have high blood pressure. People that get stressed out and most times people that have stress don't identify that they have stress. Let me let me give you an understanding what stress is. Stress means that you are an overthinker. You dwell on something too long. You see what I'm saying? And your mind takes you into images and you start wondering, I got to figure this out. I got to get this right. When I'm going to get this right. Oh, shoot. I forgot to call them. Oh, shoot. I got to call them back. Oh, shoot. I got I got fixed. Oh, man, I, I'm going to get that. Oh, I got, forgot to do that. And your mind is overloaded. High blood pressure It's the blood in your body being affected even by your mentality. It's affected by eating, but it's affected by mentality and it's causing the blood pressure to be high. But notice what it's called, high blood pressure. If there is pressure being applied that's higher than usual, 
Where does that spring forth from mainly from the mind? You see that? So it's mainly mentality. So it says teaching, you shall teach our nations, then baptize them. So, so what you're being taught is the baptism you're wearing. So, oh my gosh. So in Acts chapter four, the apostles started teaching the body of Christ about sowing and reaping and how to be financial rulers, dominators, financial entrepreneurs. How to entrepreneur financial events in your life. How to activate your bosom. How to, how to move in creative abundance. Say, Father, I receive creative abundance in my life. Once you're being taught that, that's what you're being baptized in. Now, do you know what baptized mean? It means that the power of God is going to sit on you to bring fruits, results, multiplication in the area that you are being taught and mentored. So if you're being taught about joy, it means that the power of the Holy Spirit is resting on you to tap into the fullness of joy and the joy unspeakable and the joy that strengthens you, Nehemiah 810, and all the different dimensions of joy is being unlocked to you. But it's sitting on you. It's a mantle. It's covering you. So you got a portal over your life where joy continually flows. So what happens when the financial baptism happens? See, supernatural money moving, money cometh is a financial baptism. Father, I receive the financial baptism of the Holy Spirit. Because Moses wore it. Moses brought them out with their silver and gold. God brought them out with their silver and gold. But Moses was right there leading the whole uh, exit. Abraham had a wealth baptism on him. I received my wealth baptism. Abraham had a wealth baptism on his life. So even the king that tried to take his wife had to give him wealth, had to give him servants. Because he got a baptism of wealth sitting on him. Imagine that being baptized with wealth power. Being baptized with wealth power. Imagine that. The wealth power of God baptizing you. My God, I, 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 I feel that strong. I feel the power of God on that. Having a baptism of wealth. Because I'm showing you in the text, he said, go ye, go ye therefore and teach all nation, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Jesus has his names. One of his names is Christ. It's a position rather, but it's still a name. The position has a name, Christ. <laughs> so, so, so. When I, when I baptize them in the name of the son. Remember, he was also called Jesus of Nazareth. Nazareth was a place that was overlooked. It was like an underdog. So I've been baptized into the realm where people would think I'm the underdog, but I'm still powerful. Where people might overlook me, but I'm still glorious. They might look at the of Nazareth and think that you, you're not capable, but God has given me the info that's needed, the solution that's needed for what the earth needs. I'm a supply system. One of the names of Jesus is the lamb. <sighs> mm -hmm. 
There's a Messiah baptism on my life. A Messiah baptism. Glory to God. A Messiah baptism. Imagine when you get baptized with Emmanuel, you become God with people. When you're amongst them, that's God with them. The Holy Spirit live inside of you. You become the body of Christ. Now you Emmanuel, you, you got an Emmanuel baptism. Imagine when you get a Jehovah Jireh baptism, you start providing for other people. That God will God would assign you to. You start becoming a supply system for the kingdom of heaven in all of its assignments, all of its agendas. Think about that. Being baptized with Jehovah Jireh. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. Now, all the names of the Holy Ghost, one of the names of the Holy Ghost is the spirit of wisdom. One of the names of the Holy Ghost is the spirit of understanding. One of the holy names of the Holy Ghost is the spirit of might. The spirit of knowledge. The spirit of the fear of the Lord. Isaiah 11, 2 and on. So imagine you getting baptized with might, knowledge. See, every time you listen to me, there's a baptism of knowledge. Every time you listen to me, there's a baptism of wisdom. Right now, you're being baptized with revelation, authority, kingship, priest, priesthood, priesthood power, priestly power, prosperity power. So whatever you're being teached. Is what you're being, is how you're being touched. Whatever you're being teach is how you're being touched. So if you're being teached on wealth, wealth is touching you. You got to make a decision whether you're going to entertain wealth. If you're going to give wealth play. Because the wealth angels right there are there to help you, bring you into it. God gave you that power to get wealth. He gave you the angels to get wealth as well. There's ministering spirits moving with their power. There's angels, angels of wealth moving with their power to get wealth. And they're aggressive. They're ready to bring you into the next stage, the next position, the next dimension, the next stewardship. You know, stewardship, stewardship is power not to eat the seed. Stewardship is power not to eat the seed. Stewardship is submission to God's financial mindset. Write that down. Write that down. Stewardship is submission to God's financial mindset. Write that down. It's powerful. S stewardship is submission to God's financial mindset. Stewardship is yielding to the father's financial schedule. Think about that. Stewardship is yielding to God's financial schedule. God's financial schedule is hidden in stewardship. And watch this. Stewardship is deliverance from compulsive spending.
is deliverance from compulsive spending. So watch this, saints. Compulsive spending means that you spend off of everything you see. You don't got no discipline. You don't got no wisdom. You don't got no structure. You don't got no Holy Spirit leading you on that. And you make bad financial moves. And even you buy things that's beyond your means and it sets you back financially. And now you got to make payments, try to pay that off, take care of that. So, so. There's a financial grace to be still and know that I am God in the money realm. Think about that. There is an anointing to be still and know that I am God in the money realm. Where you are no longer having anxiety attacks about your finances. And you're able to listen to the instructions that the father has given you. Because the father going to bail you out uh, out of all financial issues. He going to bail you out. But he bail you out with a seed. The father going to help you. He not going to let you struggle. Remember the word of God said, that's the father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. He going to help you. But he got to show you the strategy and it's not in winning lottery tickets. It's not in playing $5 tickets. It's not in gambling. That's not your system. It's called gambling for a reason. You're taking a risk. With who? The devil. You're not taking a risk with the father. You're not leaning on a reliable source. You, you're taking a gamble. You're hoping that something come through. That, and it's really magic. Financial magic. When you take riskies, risk with the devil, <laughs> riskies, that's how you talk when you didn't have much of education. When you take riskies with the devil, it's called financial magic. It's financial deception. Where Satan is giving you ideas of how to make money. Be careful that when you hear the message on wealth and the message on uh, prosperity, that you don't let the devil drop wrong ideas in you to make money. Saints, do you have you ever heard people have the stupidest ideas to make money? Sometimes they just overzealous. Man, I'm about to sell me some. This is what I'm about to do. I'm about to sell me some microwave popcorn. See, the difference is, you know, you most people go to the movies to get theirs. But I'm about to make me some popcorn that you got to put it in the microwave. And it come out in 20 seconds and it done, it done pop, it done voluptuate. I'll make me a popcorn stand. Have you ever heard somebody say, I'm going to make a hot dog stand? You're like, you ain't going to make a hot dog stand if you ain't got no makeup on. Some of y'all ain't gonna catch what I just said. You're not gonna make it's not <laughs> All right, all right. So 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 look at this here. So don't let the devil drop wrong financial ideas inside of you, mess you up. Cause cause you don't wanna make business moves and entrepreneurship moves. That ain't really what you have to cry out for wisdom concerning this. Because because the devil would still try to corrupt you, try to get you involved in stuff where you invest money and then it still leave you in the decline. because ain't nothing moving. Say, Father, I receive wisdom for your ideas, witty inventions, your ideas. Father, I receive wisdom for your ideas, your ideas. Father, I receive clarity with your ideas. Lord, I thank you that your voice is pe penetrating my thought life. It's ruling my thought life. It's ruling my soul. It's saturating me. You see, now, once you just pray a prayer like that, you just saturated yourself with accuracy. Accuracy is needed if you're going to step into wealth. 
because you, you don't want to, uh, you don't want the wrong spirit to come on you while you have birthrights to be rich. You see what I'm saying? See, love of money is a, is a spirit that will try to come and contaminate you while you got a right to this. You see what I'm saying? So, so love of money is a, is a, is a dimension where demons rule and they corrupt the fact that you even deserve what you're chasing after or what. You, here's what happened when you have the love of money. You can't sow once you get the money. You see what I'm saying? See, this is how you know if you got a love of money. If God give you an increase, you eat the increase. Where really that increase was supposed to increase you if you saw it. So sometimes people eat the increase when the increase was really sent to birth another level of increase that you really desire. Praise God. Now money was moving in Jesus. That's glorious. You got to watch the replay and see that. Money was moving in Jesus's day to hide the fact that he, he had rose from the dead. Nobody wanted Jesus to come out supreme. They wanted to fake something, try to make it look like Jesus didn't really rise from the dead. Look how they was using money to try to water down the power of Jesus. Saints, I'm telling you right now what the world has done through Satan and his demons is attempted to water down the power of Jesus through money. That's what the sinners and, 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 the, and, and the, uh, the wicked have done. Made it seem like they the ones blessed. They splurge in money, splurge in finances, publicly, social media, in all different areas. They're masquerading with your cars, your vehicles, your lifestyle, and making it look like children of God and Jesus himself is not powerful. So... There is a supernatural league of individuals that will be tattooed with sowing power. And they're going to fix this crooked place in the earth. Think about this. Remember the Bible said, make straight paths for your feet. I talked about that in Hebrews. I think Hebrews 12, 13 or somewhere around there. Make straight paths for your feet. Well, see, sowing is a straight path. It's not crooked. So so the way that you make money not going to be crooked. Um, your lifestyle not going to be crooked. Because it's going to bring a purity, uh, a atmosphere, so that the wealth can manifest the way that God wants it. See, you ever wonder what it means when somebody sign, uh, they get into a satanic covenant with Satan and it's like they become richer and famous? They're not just becoming richer and famous. There's false financial demons. Write that down. There's false financial demons. False financial demons will make a child of Satan rich through that covenant, through that agreement to mislead as much souls to hell with their music, with their movies, with their influence, with their fame. They are false financial demons because they was up in heaven. They saw, they saw how the father moved with uh, the minister of finances and the wisdom angel and the prosperity angels and how they was moving with the economy. Because God created the economy. That's why her villa was down here on the earth. Because God had translated what was in heaven. There is a heavenly havilla for every sower. Every soul will move in a heavenly havilla. That's money that's beyond this natural realm. It's greater than Social Security. It's greater than uh, food stamps. It's greater than uh, uh, your income at your workplace. It's a high lifestyle. High lifestyle. The, walking on that streets of gold right now. See, sowers have the power to step into the streets of gold right now. They're able to walk in it right now. Not wait until heaven. Not wait until you get translated from this earth. To, but to walk in it right now. Say, Father, I receive. I receive the heavenly havilah on my finances right now. I receive the hundredfold anointing. I receive financial angels moving for me. 
financial angels right now, minister of finances, I loose you into your ministry right now for me. And I take a hold of what belongs to me right now in Jesus name. I take it in the name of Jesus. And I am a possessor of heaven and earth. I set this in motion in the earth realm right now. I am the head and not the tail. I am a possessor of heaven and earth. I set it in motion right now. See, your words are creating the activities of your angels. When I'm sowing and saying, I got power as a governmental official to cause money to move. In the financial money bags of Jesus, it will take the sower into the glories of abundant life. Abundant life will, will, will secure you from the prisons of Satan, the endangerment of Satan.